Welcome back to Love Murder Current Affairs, our show about the stories of love gone fatally wrong that are in the news right now. First up today, we're going to start with some updates and cases that we've recently covered. We kick off with one update that is macabrely apropos given this weekend's Father's Day holiday. On January 4th of this year, a brutal familicide rocked Enoch, Utah, and the rest of the country. Michael Haight murdered his wife, mother in law, and five children before killing himself. A few weeks ago, local Utah news outlet Deseret News filed a public records request to get access to some 72 minutes of footage Michael filmed in the day leading up to the slaying. Deseret News said that while sometimes his family knows he's recording, other times he's filming with his phone in his lap or his pocket. There are some really revealing details in these videos. Many of the conversations focus on their upcoming divorce including what his wife Tasha claimed at various points in the video is emotional manipulation. Numerous times, Tasha discusses his history of controlling behavior. At one point, she says, I have seen what your payouts from Allstate are, and yet we continue to live well below our means. I have had a budget of $100 per person for Christmas, and you belittle me and berate me and assume that I do not stick to that budget. Other times, she discusses how she and apparently two of the kids want him out of the house something which she refused to do. Tasha said, I would love for you to move out on your own, but you're not moving out, and now you're making me go the legal route. Our kids have mentioned, especially our older two, that when you're here, it is more tense. We are not able to relax. We're still walking around on eggshells. Devastatingly, the videos also show Michael promising to go sledding with his kids the next day, the same day that he would ultimately end their lives. Our next update comes from another Utah-based case, this time the case of Corey Richens, who is accused of giving her husband Eric a Moscow mule with five times the lethal dose of fentanyl on March 3rd, 2022. That case was notable because Corey not only played the grieving widow, but she actually wrote a children's book about it. In that case, Corey has been charged and is awaiting trial. We'd previously heard of text messages between Corey and a drug dealer acquaintance of hers who appears to have sold her fentanyl a few times around her husband's death. CNN has obtained documents released last week ahead of a detention hearing that include an extensive iPhone search history that is incriminating, to put it mildly. Some of the searches include, can cops force you to do a lie detector test? Death certificate says pending. Will life insurance still pay? If someone is poisoned, what does it go down on the death certificate as? Oh my goodness. She is going to go down in the Googling hall of losers with Brian Walsh. Unbelievable. Like, how are you still doing this? (laughs) Well, Andy gets better because then she clearly starts to get worried. And she does some searches, including how to permanently delete information from an iPhone remotely And my personal favorite, luxury prisons for the rich in America. Too bad there isn't a trip advisor for that one. I also think that your husband's family and business partners are going to take back all the money you stole from him fraudulently, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think you're going to the Ritz, babe. They don't have a valet at the prison you're going to. Oh, boy. Well, now in the new case portion of this week's Current Affairs, Rather than one case, we're going to give the brief details of three recent cases that have heartbreakingly hit the news lately. The first is the case of 18-year-old Natalie Martin. Like so many 18-year-olds around the country, Natalie had just graduated from high school and was looking forward to the rest of her life. The Ohio teen was on a post-graduation trip to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, when her ex-boyfriend Blake Linkus, also 18, allegedly strangled her to death. All we have to go on so far are the few details that have made their way from the arrest warrants to news outlets. Natalie was murdered on Tuesday, June 6th, and found unresponsive in her hotel room. Linkus was arrested a few days later and is being held in prison without bond. According to Natalie's friend Brooklyn, who set up a GoFundMe for Natalie's funeral expenses, Natalie and Blake had dated for years but had recently broken up. Brooklyn reported that the two had remained friends, making this murder all the more shocking. 
Our hearts go out to Natalie's family and all of her friends. We will make sure to link to the GoFundMe in the show notes. And there will almost certainly be more details shared soon. And as they come out, we will share them here. Next up, another horrifying story of teen love turned tragic. Earlier this month, Madison Shemitz and her mother, Jackie Roge, were eating at a Mr. Chubby's Wings restaurant in Florida when they made an extremely unpleasant discovery that Madison's ex-boyfriend, Spencer Ross Pearson, was seated at a nearby table. And this was not just a normal, awkward ex situation. Just a week before the ill fated encounter, Jackie had filed a report alleging that Spencer had been following her daughter on her way to school, leaving notes on her car, creating fake social media accounts to harass her, and making suicidal statements toward her. And apparently, this has been going on since April. As it turns out, they had very good reason to be nervous. Jackie and Madison left the restaurant as soon as they noticed Spencer, but just seconds later, he was attacking Madison in the parking lot. According to a witness statement in the arrest warrant, Spencer allegedly tackled Madison from behind, pinned her to the ground, and stabbed her approximately 15 times. When Jackie tried to protect her daughter, she was also stabbed in the head and leg. Finally, a bystander was able to get the knife away from Spencer, but not before he slit his own throat in an attempt to kill himself. Well, miraculously, Madison has survived the heinous attack. Her sister reports that the star softball player is currently paralyzed. Her family, however, does not think for a second it will stay that way. Said her sister Tatiana, Madison is a fighter, you know. She's going to make it through this, and I know she's going to walk out of this hospital. All of our hopes and prayers go out to Madison. Last up, another wild stabbing case, although this one with a bit more resolution. Last year, a love triangle that really wasn't a love triangle exploded into violence in the UK. 44-year-old Claire Bailey had been having an affair with an unnamed married man. When that man broke it off, Claire stewed with resentment of Emma, the man's wife. A few months later, Claire decided to take matters into her own hands in a very deadly fashion. Disguising herself with a red wig and a COVID-era medical face mask, she walked up to Emma's house. She was carrying a bouquet of flowers, but concealed behind it was a carving knife. Now, keep in mind, Emma has no idea who Claire is. So she just opened the door to a woman standing there with flowers, and then she was brutally attacked. Claire started stabbing and slashing at Emma, getting her neck, chest, stomach, and arms. Luckily for Emma, her teenage daughter was also home, and she launched herself at Claire to try to stop the attack. Stunned? Claire fled the scene. She would ultimately be arrested three days later. Emma had to undergo extensive surgeries and spent more than a month in the hospital, but ultimately lived. This week, Claire was sentenced to 22 years in prison for the attack. While Emma's road to recovery remains long and painful, she is so thankful that the sentencing brings this episode to a close. I'm sure she's very relieved that that woman oh. is behind bars for 22 years. No kidding. I wish it was longer. Absolutely. Of her daughter, she said, I can't imagine what my daughter went through to witness what she did to try and stop the attack. She is my hero. She will always be my little hero. I honestly don't think I would still be here if she hadn't been home that day. And that teenage girl truly is a hero. Honestly. A month in the hospital. Oh, I hope that they are going through some serious counseling because I would be pretty ticked off with my husband if he brought somebody like that into our lives and that sort of pain and trauma to our family and our children and, of, of course, the marriage and myself through an affair. No, yes. thank you. It's not the best father to kick off this Father's Day weekend, if you know what I mean. Absolutely not. Well, hopefully this Father's Day weekend brings you much more joy, comfort, and true family bliss. Until next time, I'm Jesse Prey. And I'm Andy Cassette, signing off for Love Murder Current Affairs. <laughs>